Each year, more than 78 million gallons of oil enters U.S. waterways. These spills can originate from pipeline breaks, collisions of ships, storage tank leaks, or oil rig explosions. Oil can spread very rapidly unless it is contained by a boom permeating the surrounding environment and causing severe damage to ecosystems. It can disrupt the respiration, reproduction, and thermoregulation of the affected organisms, decreasing wildlife populations and resulting in heavily unbalanced food chains. Although some of the effects are immediate, the impacts of these disasters can wreak havoc for years after the initial incident. Despite the best efforts to prevent oil spills, more than 14,000 are reported annually. Large-scale spills such as the 2010 Deepwater Horizon or 1989 Exxon Valdez cost billions of dollars in cleanup efforts. After more than 25 years, oil is still found on the beaches of Prince William Sound, Alaska, and is projected to be there for decades to come. While booms and skimmers are currently the most effective means for large-scale oil spill removal, this method operates very poorly in rough waters. It is easily hindered by debris and often leaves behind significant amounts of oil. Due to these limitations, sorbents are often applied to the area that will absorb the remaining oil and can be collected afterwards for further disposal. However, the sorbents currently used tend to absorb water and sink and are not recyclable. Our solution is a form of carbon nanotubes which are affectionately called CNTs. They take one of the most abundant resources on Earth, carbon, and use it on a nanomolecular scale. Graphite, a carbon allotrope, has a structure containing layers of atoms arranged at the corners of contiguous hexagons. CNTs are rolled monolayers of this material and can be considered to be structurally composed of planar hexagonal lattices. When the graphene is rolled, the properties of the material are significantly altered due to the change in its structure. Typically, the length across the nanotubes are about 1.2 to 1.4 nanometers, approximately 10 times the radius of the carbon atoms themselves. Carbon nanotubes have a wide range of properties that are highly desirable for many applications, including strength, hardness, electrical, and thermal properties. They are highly adaptable for utilizations that can be seen, or rather not seen, because they're so small. Get it? I'll show myself out. Some current uses of carbon nanotubes include structurally improving bicycle components, nanoscale electronics, chemical sensors, the hulls of maritime vessels, and aerospace technology, either through the creation of conductive plastics, coatings, or composites. We are going to specifically examine aerosol-assisted chemical vapor deposition, since it is the process used to produce the boron-doped carbon nanotube sponges. In this method, an energy source is used to break hydrogen and carbon gas molecules apart. The reactive carbon species then diffuse down to a substrate coated with metal catalyst particles, typically iron or nickel. Carbon nanotubes grow from the substrate and control over the size and growth rate can be maintained. Doping is the introduction of an impurity into a substance at low concentrations to modulate properties. During the growth process, triethyl borane is introduced as the boron source. This results in significant changes to tubule morphology. When the boron is added to the nanotubes, the hexagonal carbon lattice structure is disrupted. Boron and carbon have different numbers of valence electrons, resulting in curvature changes that cause deviation from the typical organized growth pattern. The ultimate result are elbow defects, which are bends caused by the insertion of the boron atom into the tubular structure. These junctions allow for the growth of a 3D network comprised of randomly oriented and entangled nanotubes through covalent bonding. As opposed to the creation of many straight tubes with the usual characteristics, the new interconnected material is woven and foam-like. These sponges have remarkable contaminant cleanup capabilities due to a combination of impressive properties, which resulted from an alteration in processing that affected the structure. Exploiting the many properties of the boron-doped carbon nanotube sponges, such as being hydrophobic, light, porous, highly elastic and reusable, this material is an extremely effective absorbent in cleaning up oil spills. Studies have shown that the sponges are able to absorb oil up to 150 times their initial weight without absorbing water. Thus far, researchers have grown them from nanoscale sizes up to half an inch square blocks, and the process can be easily scaled up, which would allow for even greater levels of oil intake. Although they are highly suitable for this specific application, they could also potentially be used to remove bacteria or contaminants from other liquids. Carbon nanotube sponges are hydrophobic and oleophilic by nature, with a contact angle at approximately 160 degrees for water droplets. Since the nanotubes are made up of sheets of graphene, most of the bonds are between carbon atoms, which all have the same electronegativity. The addition of the boron atoms means that some of the bonds are additionally carbon-boron. 
However, these elements are next to each other on the periodic table, indicating a minimal electronegativity difference. As a result, the carbon nanotubes are nonpolar as overall. When placed into water, which is highly polar, there is a repulsive force between the molecules, leading to their hydrophobicity. Likewise, the attractive forces between nonpolar oil and the nanotubes result in the oleophilic properties. These factors, in combination with their low density, allow for the carbon nanotube sponges to float on the surface of the water, absorbing only the oil that is present. Due to the porosity, lightness, and large surface area that this material possesses, it is extremely effective as an oil absorbent. A very important quality is its lightness as well as its low density. These two properties are due to the fact that the sponges are comprised of 99% air and they are the second least dense material on the planet behind aerogel. This greatly contributes to the high absorption levels. The oil can be retained in these porous spaces. In fact, the density of the carbon nanotube sponge is 1% the density of water, which allows the material to float when in water. Some of the defining characteristics of carbon nanotubes are their high strength and elasticity. Carbon nanotubes are made up of rolled sheets of graphene, a layer of carbon bonded in a hexagonal structure similar to and as strong as benzene rings. It is this honeycomb lattice composed of the hexagonal carbon unit cells that give the carbon nanotubes their extremely high strength and elasticity. The sp2 carbon to carbon bonds comprising the graphene cylinders provide the CNTs with their strength. The tensile strength of carbon nanotubes is incredibly large, surpassing some of the strongest materials such as graphite fibers, Kevlar, and stainless steel. A tensile strength in Young's modulus of up to 0.15 terapascals and 0.8 terapascals respectively have been recorded for multi-walled carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotube sponges are composed of billions of randomly organized carbon nanotubes, allowing them to isotropically take on similar functionalities. The elbow joints specifically within the boron-doped carbon nanotube structure act as springs which allow the sponges to withstand high levels of stress without being irreversibly deformed. Due to the strength and elasticity of carbon nanotubes, carbon nanotube sponges can be deformed into any shape that best suits their role in oil spill recovery and will also be able to endure the strains during transportation and use. A tremendous feature of these sponges is that they are reusable, potentially up to hundreds or thousands of times. Due to the iron catalyst particles used in the growth process that remain trapped in the nanotube core, carbon nanotube sponges possess ferromagnetic properties. As a result, they can be picked up by magnets, allowing for plausible collection in large waterways for reuse. After saturation, the oil can then be burned out while the carbon nanotube structures themselves remain intact. The oil protects nanotubes from significant oxidation during this process, and once it has been burned away, the nanotubes quickly drop below the oxidation temperature. Another option for cleaning the carbon nanotube sponges is mechanical compression, which additionally allows for the oil to be salvaged. Furthermore, the structural integrity of the sponge is not compromised due to the carbon nanotube's high tensile strength and elasticity, which further contributes to the high recyclability potential of the carbon nanotube sponge. As stated earlier, CNT sponges are both hydrophobic and oleophilic, making them optimal for oil spill cleanup. The sponges have a saturated sorption capacity over 100 grams per gram, which is nearly five times more absorbent than other commercial sorbents currently used. And up to 96% of the oil absorbed by the sponge can be safely removed and reused through compression and burning. The sponges could be dispersed within a boom and then later collected by a net or magnetic furnished boat. The oil could then be removed from the sponges on site through compression or at an off-site power station via burning. The sponges could then be placed back into the water for continued oil recovery. However, there are some considerations to take into account. CNT properties suggest that they have high potential for accumulation along the food chains, and their toxicity level to humans and the surrounding environments are not fully known. The physical and chemical characteristics of CNTs influenced by production impact of the toxicity and further studies with the carbon nanotube sponges would need to be conducted to determine their usability. While carbon nanotube sponges show the potential to be the most effective means of oil spill cleanup, the current production method for carbon nanotube sponges is expensive and very intricate. In addition to the high costs and complex development methods, the size of the sponges would likely need to be increased to be more efficient as well. However, in theory, a large amount of small carbon nanotube sponges could be spread across a wide area to be used for the oil spill cleanup. Although the carbon nanotube sponges have a few drawbacks, if more cost-efficient methods can be developed for the mass production of larger carbon nanotube sponges, then the use of this incredibly lightweight and absorbent material may become standard protocol for oil spill recovery across the world.